This is a quick video talking about attention. This was my own summary from the Psy246 course from Macquarie University on Cognitive Psychology. There is too much information to process, thus attention is required to sort out what is useful. So to begin with, alertness or concentration is the adjusting of the arousal, which helps to stop daydreaming. And there is a degree of selectivity in attention, which allows individuals to attend to certain stimuli. The dichotic listening task is a task that involves listening to two different information points, and there is a shadowed and unattenuated E. This is usually done in the context of the cocktail party problem, whereby there is often a lot of chatter that happens, a lot of noise going on, but as soon as someone says your name, you're able to shift attention and, well, shift it towards whoever said your name. Cherry 1953 found that individuals only notice physical, but not the meaning of the unattenuated message. Moray in 1959 found that participants did not notice repetition of the same word 35 times, but they did recognize their own name in the unattenuated E. Bottleneck models of attention. These assume that there is a bottleneck or selection process. Broadband's filter model assumes that stimuli gain access in parallel to sensory register selection, which is based upon perceptual characteristics. There is a selective filter that prevents overloading of the limited short-term memory capacity. Treesman's attenuation model assumes that there are attenuated and unattenuated parallel processes, and that the unattenuated processes require crossing of context-appropriate stimuli thresholds, and that these thresholds can become lower as adjusted by top-down control, allowing for the unattenuation to break through. Basically, there is a all or none filter. In the dichotic listening tasks, when subjects switched from shadow to unattenuated ear, this fitted the context and the threshold was manipulated by expectation which drove attenuation. So all of this talk about threshold, I'll define what threshold is. A threshold is the minimum amount that is needed to consciously notice a given stimuli. This causes the neuron to reach depolarization. Deutsch and Deutsch proposed their late selection model, which assumed everything was fully analyzed at all levels, physically and semantically without attention. And this argued that the attenuator is redundant. The bottleneck was said to be late at the selection for action slash response. Um, it was believed that there was no limit to the processing and no limit to the bottleneck in the short term memory. Shadowing set a limit since individuals cannot say two things at the same time. They can only attend to one thing at any given one time. Johnston and Hines proposed their flexible bottleneck view, which stated that the location of the bottleneck was flexible and that unattenuation is not always processed to levels of meaning. So this is in contrast to Deutsch and Deutsch. In their experiment, Johnston and Hines experimented with focus attention and divided attenuation conditions where subjects were or were not told which ear the target would arrive, and they found that divided attention occurs more so for appropriate compared to neutral than compared to inappropriate words. So non-targets were processed to levels of meaning. But this bottleneck must be flexible then, since attention is divided and the memory of items drops, which shows that there are more processing stages that occur. The meaning of the non-targets were processed when attention was divided over two E's, but not when attention was focused. So when individuals had a singular focus, then um, their attention obviously did not encompass what both ears were listening to. Now I'll talk about divided attention or multitasking. So task switching tasks, according to Alizabi and Becker 2013, they gave participants a stimulus of a digit and a letter, and they were required to switch and undergo repetition trials. It was found that heavy multitaskers had little switch costs, which was the difference between switch and repeated trials. Olfer et al. 2009, using the media multitasking index questionnaire, high multitaskers 
were poor at shifting attention. Dual task performance, similar to uh, modes of perceiving stimuli and responding. Participants who did something visual while engaging in another visual task, it was found that the practice process tasks would happen automatically in that it was easier to perform, that practice makes perfect. Schifrin and Schneider performed an experiment dealing with the target direction detection task whereby participants memorized one to four targets and then were shown a display. Subjects decided whether the display contained the target using consistent mapping whereby targets and distractors do not overlap and varied mapping where targets on one trial may be a distractor on the next. It was found that consistent mapping brought about parallel searches and there was no set size effect. That's because uh, consistent mapping allowed for um, practice. Notably, in consistent mapping, the absence of the set size effect occurred. Uh, this meant that automaticity doesn't require attentional capacity. That, well, it's automatic. While varied mapping, on the other hand, required serial search. And this, as a result, brought about an increase in reaction time as the set sizes increase. So, automaticity. This is defined as fast processes that require little attentional capacity and is unavailable to consciousness, it is unavoidable, and it is inflexible, whereby it is hard to modify once learned. This is the effect of practice, pretty much, that it becomes automatized, automatized or automatic. Logan's instance theory. Instance representation, according to Logan, was where there was each encounter with a stimulus was encoded separately as memory episodes. And with practice, the encoding of these representations became instantaneous. They became single step direct access retrieval processes. Lazalin and Logan's numerosity judgment was where memory of algorithms became automatic when practice and that there was a change in orientation or configuration that affected results. Keeping the configuration the same allowed for practice. It didn't matter that the identity was changed with old, old or old new numeric patterns. There was to something similar from the last one and that as a result produced automaticity. So in summary, we looked at attention, how it involves alertness and concentration and selectivity. We looked at the dichotic listening task, as well as Sherry and Murray's findings. We looked at the different bottleneck models of attention, such as Broadband's filter model, Treesman's attenuation model. Uh, we defined the threshold, Deutsch and Deutsch's late selection model, Johnston and Heinz's flexible bottleneck view, divided attention uh, in the form of multitasking, task switching tasks, dual task performance, performance, Schifrin and Schneider's experiment on target detection tasks. We looked at automaticity, Logan's instance theory, and finally, Laslin and Logan's numerosity judgment. Thanks for watching. Join me in the next video whereby I talk about visual attention. Bye-bye.